this video demonstration today is specifically going to cover the basics of CSS. How does CSS work in terms of styling our pages, our HTML pages? So one of the first things you have to understand is how does CSS come together? What does the CSS syntax look like? So this image shows you how it comes together in the syntax. So the first one where you see P, that is your selector. This could be any tag though. It could be nav, it could be header, it could be H1, H2, paragraph. This is the tag. It's the tag itself. It's the HTML tag. So that's your selector. And then it's divided into properties, which in this case is color, and property values, which in this case is red. And then the whole thing is called a decoration. It always ends, or it always starts with the property, colon, property value, semicolon. You always need to remember to have the semicolon here. Uh, that signifies that the decoration is complete uh, to move on to the next decoration. Because you can have multiple decorations for any selector. Uh, some of them will include height and width and font. There's a list of probably I don't know, 50 or so of different properties that are available to style your page. And you just keep adding as many as you need. Sometimes I have um, CSS that's 10 different things. Um, that's also where you can round the corners of your boxes. That's also where you can change the font. It can change the font type. It can change the font weight. So there's a lot of different decorations that you can include in this selector. So one of the most important things to understand is how does this how does this CSS syntax work? Uh, it always starts with the tag, the curly bracket, the decoration, however many of those you have, and then it ends with the curly bracket. And you can keep on adding on. Uh, so any CSS document can have multiple can have multiple selectors in it. Uh, and it could be one big style sheet. I've had style sheets that, depending on the, the breadth of the website, could be, a, you know, a thousand lines long. Uh, and it does not affect file size or anything like that. And the external style sheet is the most powerful because anything that is linked to that external style sheet, any HTML page, you make a change in that style sheet, will automatically update. So it's a really powerful tool, and that's why we're looking at it, is looking at how does the CSS syntax work. So now that we know this, let's take a look at how do I actually put it together in my website. This is my root directory setup. So the root directory I have set up with an index, a contact us, about us, um, a CSS file folder, which is where I'm going to put my CSS and my images. And I'm going to be working with my index page first and then so on. I'll move up the line and show you how to get that stuff entered. So I will go ahead and open up my index.html page in brackets. So this is my overall setup for my page. I have my header, my nav, my article, and my footer all inside of my body tag. And remember that anything be inside of the body tag is what the audience is going to see. Anything within the head tag, that's for the browser. The browser reads it. And then this title is what's seen at the top of the page on the tab. So that's what they see. The audience will actually see this. Um, keywords are very popular and should be used all the time. Keywords are what makes the site searchable. So looking at what we need to do, we need to add um, a style sheet to this document. So I'm going to go ahead and do File, New, and I'm going to do File, save as and I'm going to go I'm going to navigate to my folder and I'm going to save it in my CSS folder and I'm going to name it styles.css make sure that the file extension is .css that's really really important so making sure that you have your .css I'm going to hit save and now I have my CSS file and what I want to do is I want to set up my syntax. So I have header that I need to address. I need to do something with my nav. 
I need to do something with my article. And I need to do something with my footer. Okay, so I have this set up here and I'm going to start adding my articles. I'm going to start adding my properties and values to create my decorations. Okay, so let me go ahead and make sure I save this. And what I want to do is, according to the requirements, I need to add a background color. And you can tell as I start typing, so I have back, as I type to start typing my uh, properties are going to show up and then I can pick any color out of here I can also put any hexadecimal value and you learned about hex hexadecimal values when you were picking out colors so you could add your hex hexadecimal or just pick out a color here and then I'm going to make sure that I put my semicolon because that says hey look I'm done uh, with that decoration and I want to add another one so then I want to do width and I need to put in those pixel values you were given. So I'll do height and I'll come back to those really quick and I'm going to save it. I typically will save things after I do a couple of lines of code uh, just to make sure that I'm saving on time um, and protecting my, protecting my page. So this width is going to be 940 pixels. 160. And I'm going to give a background color here and have the same width. Oops, and see, I forgot my semi or colon, so I need to make sure I do that. I'm going to give my article a background color as well. Now I'll give my footer the background color this will also have a width and a height and I'm gonna save this also take note that the width and the height anything that's measured or has a specific width or height needs to have pixel value uh, so PX is just sort for pixels. The, anything on the web is measured in pixels. So just making sure that you put the PX there is really important. So it tells it, how do I measure this versus being in inches or any other length value points. We measure in pixels. PX is what we'll always put after anything that we have a specific width for. So I have added in all of my widths and heights for the header the nav the article the footer the main reason that the article does not have a height requirement is that this we want to allow the height to change based on the amount of context content and we don't want to you know truncate it and say hey you can only be this high whereas the other areas we're telling it specifically how high we want them so now that we have this all set up we have all the css settings done we're going to link our style sheet to our index.html page. The linking is what will tell it, hey, you know, you need to go out here to the CSS page and find these values for me and display them in the browser. So to link up your code, you'll look at line seven on my document to link up your CSS to your HTML. You need to have it say link and this is relative so and it's going to be a style sheet so what's the relation it's a style sheet the type is text slash CSS this could change if you're going to use JavaScript so it would be text slash JS but we're using CSS so we want to tell it what type it is and then we want to tell it where is it and as you saw before the CSS my styles.css was in my CSS folder so I need to tell it hey you need to go to my CSS folder and grab my CSS style sheet this will link your style sheet to the HTML document that will now show us how 
show us all of our colors we picked out, the height, the width of everything. Um, so let's go ahead and test that out. But first, make sure you save it because it needs to make sure that you save it um, before you test anything live. So that's always a good troubleshoot is making sure the file is saved before you go into your live view. So now here is my page. Um, you can tell here's where your title goes. And then this is my header, my nav bar, my footer. But my content area, the reason nothing's showing is because we only gave it a width. We didn't give it a height. And I don't have any content in it. So what I want to do is I want to come in here and say this is content. And if it helps, you can also say, uh, if it helps you visually, you can put in the words so you know what they are. Now remember to save it. You click on this live button over here. and see how you can see this is content footer. And that's the reason we didn't see it before was because there was no content in there to give it that height. So the more that I can pull in there, the better. Now let's see the power of CSS. So if I come back over here and I say, hey, those that color was just way too close to that dark orchid, I wanna get a different color. And sometimes it's easier if you just start over and you type it in again. So then you can get the prompts. It's up to you, or you can put in a hexadecimal value, and that would also work. But maybe I want to say Dodger Blue. And I'll finish that out with a semicolon. Make sure I save this. Go back to my index page and go ahead and view it in the live. And as you can see, it took that color change immediately. Um, so that's really the power of CSS. So that's the first, first part of getting your page formatted uh, using CSS and ready to go.